Have you been considering using a vitamin A eye drop or gel for your dry eye? Did your doctor recommend it, but when you started watching videos, you found out that retinol, a vitamin A derivative, can actually make dry eye worse? In today's video, I'll try to demystify that confusion and give you the most recent understanding of the use of vitamin A around the eye. Welcome to Eye School with Dr. D, where my goal is to arm you with the knowledge you need to take control of your eye health and have the best vision possible. Like and subscribe for videos every week. Welcome to Saturday Eye School. I'm your host, Dr. D. This is part of my series on at-home remedies for dry eye. In this series, I cover over-the-counter, readily available treatments that can be done at home. If you're new to dry eye or new to the series, make sure to check out my first video about dry eye treatment algorithms first. In today's video, we'll discuss vitamin A in over-the-counter drops and gels and whether or not they should be used in the treatment of dry eye disease. So I've made a lot of videos on retinol itself, even the application of retinol around the eye, and you hear me talk about how damaging it can be to the meibomian glands. If you've seen my videos on retinol, it is a derivative of vitamin A, and you might have been wondering whether or not vitamin A drops and gels should really be used. In fact, there've been a couple of questions in the comments to this effect. So I'll put these comments here on screen, just a couple of them that I've gotten, but every single time I post a retinol video, um, you guys are asking me questions. Hey, Dr. D, like my doctor prescribed Vitapos or, or prescribed one of these other vitamin A drops. Does your video mean that I shouldn't be using it? Is it actually bad for my eyes? So let's take a look directly at the Tear Film and Ocular Surface Society Do's 2 report on antioxidants like vitamin A. This comes from section 2.1.1.1.4 of their report, literally the antioxidant section. Um, I just said that so that you could look at the report if you want to, you don't have to leave that in there. <laughs> Um, but in that section, I quote, this is from their report, the presence of oxygen-free radicals in the tears of patients with dry eye disease has resulted in the exploration of the potential application of antioxidants for the management of dry eye disease. So one of the antioxidant eye drops, vitamin A or retinal palmitate, showed significant effects in improving blurred vision, improving tear breakup time, improving Schirmer score, which is a measure of the production of tears, and impression cytology findings in subjects with dry eye disease in a prospective randomized controlled parallel study. So they're acknowledging that vitamin A is helpful for some of these measures of dry eye disease. The report goes on to say, however, vitamin A metabolites are also known to cause MGD or meibomian gland dysfunction in animal models, including glandular keratinization and atrophy. So atrophy is not a good thing when we talk about the meibomian glands. Reduced quality of the meibum, which is the actual oil itself, reduced tear film breakup time, increased tear film osmolarity, and that's not a good thing, and dry eye symptoms. So there are further details in the report, um, in further reports of TFOS induced. And here is where the rub is, folks. While vitamin A is really good for the corneal and conjunctival cells and does help dry eyes, it is really bad for the meibomian glands, which are pretty critical for preventing dry eye as well. Therefore, deciding to use vitamin A or not is truly one of these at-home remedies that I would not recommend just starting on your own without the opinion of your doctor. Even though this one is readily available on Amazon and other retailers, this is one that I think you really should have your meibomian glands imaged. In my dry eye clinic, I perform infrared imaging on all patients' meibomian glands so that I can monitor those glands throughout treatment. Because meibomian gland dysfunction is present in up to 86% of people with dry eye, many of my patients for whom we'd be considering vitamin A 
are also gonna show gland atrophy that they already have. And so it's really important to be careful and monitor the health of the meibomian glands if you are gonna be on a vitamin A treatment. We still don't understand how much, if any, vitamin A or retinol, or for that matter, the concentrations or the formulations that would be acceptable. We don't know what really can be tolerated by the meibomian glands without causing damage. So in general, my position has been to just avoid using retinol around the eyes in any concentration, avoid using vitamin A eye drops, certainly without the recommendation of your doctor. However, I wanna be clear that if your doctor has advised it, there is a reason, and I think that that's completely acceptable. I myself have patients who are on Vitapos, and um, it's just very important that you're following the recommendation of your doctor and being monitored, especially those meibomian glands. I hope that that helps. This retinol vitamin A situation can be very confusing. Just know that the research is still being done and that our understanding is gonna evolve over time. Until then, use it with caution under the direction of a medical professional and make sure to ask how your meibomian glands are holding up and whether the quality of the oil is what it should be. That's it for today's Saturday School. Thanks for attending. This does count as extra credit and I am keeping track. If you like this content, please do give it a thumbs up as that's how YouTube knows that these videos are helpful to my subscribers. And if you're not one of those yet, maybe you should be. I'll see you next time.